Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. As the member of the tech content creation community, it's hard to avoid certain topics. As I see it, videos about which hardware or software to use are mandatory, and today we're going to talk about the best operating system for developers. Let's begin. I already mentioned it many times that your job as a software developer is to solve problems. The time has come to introduce you to Vlad's first rule of problem solving. Don't solve problems that you don't have. Unless you're watching this video on your phone, there is a 100% chance that you own one or more computers. So what's the best operating system for you? Exactly, the one that is already installed on all of them. Emotions aside, I'm recording this video at the end of 2017, and by now, all major differences between all the operating systems are, well, not major anymore. With a few exceptions, most apps run everywhere, and some of them even run in a browser slash cloud. Most driver issues have been resolved, and the prices are getting aligned as well. I'll get to the prices in a second, don't you dare touch this dislike button. There's a lot of fanboyism surrounding this discussion, but I already made a video about dev wars, so make sure to watch it before disliking this one. Okay, so all operating systems are the same. Video done. Okay, thanks, bye. All right, all right, all right, I got some more content for you. The first thing that we're gonna do is talk about what I'm using and why. These will also be general reasons, which are not necessarily driven by my passion for software development. And once I'm done vlogging, I'm gonna leave you with some useful tips. Okay, so I grew up with Windows, starting with Windows 98. I guess I'm not that old yet, huh? As I mentioned in my very first video, I got into programming because I used to play games. And I still do, but let's be honest, these days I have maybe an hour in the entire week to do so, and then most of the time something else comes up and I don't even get that. But still, games and me just being used to Windows are the primary reasons why I'm still on it. I'm on Ubuntu Linux at work, and I'll get to that in a second. I can already say though that the reason why I'm using Ubuntu is not because I think that it's the best. It just always worked. So what did I do? I applied my first rule of problem solving. Okay, here are a few rather objective reasons why I'm on Windows. Note that they're not necessarily advantages over other operating systems. It's mostly things that just work or at least don't make me want to kill myself. And again, not all the things are relevant for developers. Sorry. Number one, even though it's possible to run games on macOS and Linux, Windows is still undeniably the king after all these years. A lot of developers, including this guy, play computer games, which is why I consider this point relevant for this list. By the way, fun fact, did you know that Macs used to be associated with gaming and Windows was all about work, and then these companies started to fight for these respective markets and the tables flipped? How amusing. Number two, Mac used to be the king when it came to driver support since both hardware and software are from the same company. But firstly, this is only the case with their own hardware. When it comes to other things like mice, printers, microphones, etc., you're on your own, like everyone else. And secondly, driver support in Windows 10 is very well streamlined these days. I was shocked the first time I installed Windows 10 a few years ago and all of my drivers were just magically there. Number three, as you might have noticed, I prefer to use Linux for development, but I'm running it in a virtual machine. In fact, I'm doing the same thing at work and it works just fine. Before you jump to your keyboard to post some hateful comments, the speed reduction from a virtual machine is barely noticeable these days. I will, however, advise you at this point that if you want to get the maximum performance out of your system, then obviously install it natively. In fact, if I ever decide to make a video about which hardware to buy, I will strongly argue for the fastest memory that you can get. But since I'm in a virtual machine myself, I'm being kind of hypocritical here. But it gets the job done, I swear to God. All right, so I use Linux at work because it's easier to maintain. It's easy to do backups, which is easy to do with virtual machines anyway. It's easy to write a script that would install everything you need on a freshly installed system, etc. I'm gonna mention a few other benefits in a second. Oh, and by the way, it's not a secret that any Linux shell is better than the most powerful shell for Windows. And yes, pun intended. Quick side note about virtual machines. The ability to switch between multiple systems at runtime and the ease of backups are both amazing features. These two features alone are a reason enough for me to keep using VMs. All you need is at least 4 cores and 16 gigs of RAM, but of course the more the better. I highly encourage you to play with them. I'm gonna make a video soon about how to set one up. Number 4. I'm used to it. Don't have much to say about it. I guess they call it the comfort zone for a reason. Alright, these were the only 4 reasons that I could suck out of my thumb. Let's talk about you now, shall we? Here's a list of 7 things that I consider relevant. They are unsorted and unstructured, but here they are. Number 1. The shell is your friend. As a developer, you want to get used to the shell. And as I already mentioned, Linux is king here. Not to forget about macOS, which is a full-blown Unix system. By the way, since we're already talking about operating systems, and I can't imagine making a video in the future about a similar topic, here's an extra story for you. Unix and Linux are not the same thing. They have almost nothing to do with each other. Unix was there earlier. It's free for private, but pricey for commercial use. 
It also makes your company want to hire an army of lawyers to make sure that you don't violate the Unix license agreement. So a smart guy named Linus Torvalds thought that this is not the way to go. So he invented Linux, and contrary to Unix, it was free and open source, which is not the same thing, by the way. Okay, so the thing is that by that time, people got used to the shell commands of Unix, so Linus thought that it wouldn't be a good idea to reinvent them. So he used most of the same commands, and they're still used today. I believe that this was the root to the whole Unix versus Linux confusion. All right, history lesson over. Back to the list. Number two, this is a short one. Most software development tools are available on all major operating systems. But of course there are exceptions. Number three, Unix slash Linux is dominating the server space. And by the way, from now on, I'm gonna use the terms Unix and Linux interchangeably like the rest of the world. But you're an expert now, you know the difference. So if you're interested in operations, DevOps, or maybe even joining a startup where you have to be able to work on anything from servers all the way up to front end, then Linux knowledge is a very marketable skill. A lot of developers seem to love Macs, and even though the shell is most of the time the same, there might be some differences, so beware. I've never used a Mac though, so take this information with a grain of salt. Anyways, Macs don't run on servers, even though they technically should be able to because they're full-blown Unix systems. Number four, the price. Windows costs a lot. I'm in Germany, and for us, it's 279 euros at the moment. Linux is free, macOS is also free these days, but you're only allowed to run it on a Mac. It is legal to run it in a virtual environment, but only if the host is also a Mac. It's probably also the reason why macOS is free these days, because it's probably included in the price of the Mac anyway. Slowly moving to number 5, which is connected to number 4. You can install Linux or Windows on any machine, even on a Mac. You can't do that with macOS, so even if you had reasons to install macOS, you can't do that without Apple's hardware. If you think that a stationary system is the best for you based on your traveling needs, then feel free to choose whatever you like, assuming of course that you can afford the upcoming generations of Macs. However, most developers tend to go with laptops these days, and the problem with Macs in that area is that in the past few years, the hardware didn't really keep up, especially in terms of memory, which is vital for developers. The maximum for a MacBook Pro is 16 gigs, and it's not even DDR4. Memory is cheap. I got 32 gigs in my Lenovo laptop, and it cost me only 200 euros. The memory, not the laptop. So even though Apple products have always been more expensive, now the difference is getting kind of ridiculous. However, Apple products seem to have a better resale value, so this might influence your purchase decision. Number six, platform-specific development. If you want to develop for the Mac ecosystem, you need to have a Mac. If you want to develop for the .NET ecosystem, you don't always need Windows, but usually, in most cases, it's the path of least resistance. By the way, I always assumed that game development was only possible on Windows, but it turns out that both the Unreal and Unity engines are also installable on a Mac. It also seems to be possible on Linux, but people seem to still have problems there, so beware. Also, don't forget that you can have Linux as a host and then running either Windows or Mac in a virtual machine. I wonder how that works for game development, though. Let me know in the comments below if you have any experience with that, I'm really curious. And of course, number seven, viruses. Most people on this particular planet use Windows, so most viruses target Windows. Captain Obvious, reporting back to duty. All right, that's actually all I gotta say about this topic. Please don't forget Vlad's first rule of problem solving. Life is too short, so don't waste your time trying to solve problems that you don't have. Just stick to the system that you already know and don't sweat it. It's Vlad. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any fascinating videos like this one. Take care.